So here is the most important equation that we want to uh, understand. So delta G equals to delta H minus T delta S. So the delta H is actually your enthalpy. Delta S is actually the entropy. T is temperature. Okay, and it has to be in Kelvin. Okay, delta G of course is actually your free energy. We know if you want to have a spontaneous process, then you know your delta G need to be negative. Then depending on the delta H and delta S you got from your questions, a certain conditions your delta G will always be negative. A certain condition your delta G will always be positive. Okay, so how do we actually make all those judgments? So we use this two-dimensional coordinates to make all things more clear. Here you can see uh, the x-axis is actually your delta S. Okay, your y-axis is actually delta H. Here will be negative for your delta S. Here will be positive for your delta S. Okay, and this will be positive for your delta H, negative for your delta H. If we plot out this delta G as a function of your delta S and delta H, you can actually divide your delta G into four different quadrants. So let's look at this quadrant first. Okay, so in this quadrant we know your delta H is positive and then your delta S is negative. Then we know your delta G, which is actually your delta H minus T delta S. Okay, so under this case, we know. Okay, so the first term is actually positive. Second term is negative because temperature is actually expressed in the Kelvin, right? So the temperature term will always be positive. Therefore, if you look more carefully, you won't see that the second term, okay, negative T delta S, that term will be positive. So you know your delta G will always, always larger than zero. So let's actually the things you are going to expect. In this quadrant, your delta G will always, always be positive. What it means is that the reaction will never be spontaneous at all temperature. If you see your delta H is positive, your delta S is negative, then you know your delta G will always, always be positive regarding what temperature you are at. Then we want to jump to the another quadrant, which is this button right quadrant. So you know your delta H is going to be negative. Your delta S will be positive. So since your delta G is delta H minus T delta S. Okay, so the first thing delta H is negative. Minus T delta S. So the second thing is also negative. Therefore, your delta G will always, always be negative. So what it tells us is that if you have your delta H negative, delta S positive, okay, your delta G will always be negative. That means the reactions will always be spontaneous at all temperature. Things get more interesting when you jump to the other two quadrants. For example, on this quadrant, you know your delta H is positive and your delta S is also positive. Therefore, your delta G is going to equal delta H minus T delta S. If you want to have your delta G become negative, the second term needs to be actually outweigh the first term, right? So that you have a chance to make your delta G become negative. So this term to when it become as big as possible, so that your delta G will become negative. So what it means, if you want this to happen, so that the reaction will become spontaneous when the temperature is high. So if you have a very high temperature, then you will see that the second term is going to become the dominant term. Therefore, your delta G will become negative. And the very last one is actually, if you have your delta H is negative, delta S is also negative. So under this case, you know your delta G is going to equal to delta H minus T delta S. The first term is actually negative. Okay, second term, delta S is negative, right? But negative, negative, make this term become, make this term become positive. Then you know 
your delta G will only be negative when your temperature is low. So the question you are going to encounter in your homework is actually that like, it's going to give you delta H and delta S. So they're going to give you uh, different signs and ask when the delta G will become negative. If it's actually fall in the top left, then you should answer it will never happen. At any temperatures, your reaction won't be spontaneous. But if it's actually in the bottom right corner, then you know at any temperature, it will always become spontaneous. But if it's actually on the top right or bottom left, then you should know at what conditions you are going to have the delta G smaller than zero. Okay, so this is actually one type of questions you are going to see a lot uh, in your homework. This is actually examples you are going to see in your homework. So here you can see four different equations. In your homework, it's going to ask, predict the sign of your delta H, delta S, and delta G. So let's look at the first equations. Potassium plus H2O give you potassium cations plus OH minus plus H2. And it is a exothermic reaction. So if it is a exothermic reaction, the things that you should know is that it's actually your delta H is negative. <clears throat> How about your delta S? Can you predict the delta S if all this reaction is positive or negative? Okay, so remember in the beginning we say the, the way you judge whether the delta S is positive or negative is actually you compare the number of more of gas molecules on the product side minus that in the reactant side. So if you have more gas molecule on the product side, then your delta S will be positive. So in this case, is the delta S positive or negative? This is the only gas molecule in this equation, right? You don't have gas molecule on your reactant side. So product minus reactant. So you know you have actually positive value, right? Therefore, the delta S is actually positive for this reaction. How about your delta G? OK, delta G is equal to delta H minus T delta S. So the first term, delta H is negative. Delta S is actually positive. Therefore, make this second term also negative, right? So you know your delta G will always, always be negative. Under this case, you know the reaction will be spontaneous at all temperature. Okay, let's look at the second equation. So it says this second equation is actually an endothermic reaction. Every time you see endothermic reaction, I mean sector, your delta H is positive. How about your delta S? Because you only see the gas molecule on the reactant side. So you know your delta S is negative. So once you have this, then you look at your delta G. Delta H, which is your first term, is positive. Delta S is negative with that negative sign in the front of the minus T delta S. So you know your second term will always be positive as well. Therefore, you know your delta G will always be positive. Therefore, you know the reaction is not spontaneous at low temperature. The third equation. This equation says it's a endothermic reaction. Endothermic means what? Your delta H is positive. How about your delta S? Okay, so we say the entropy is actually gas way larger than liquid, larger than solid. So in this equation, do you have gas? You don't, right? They are going to compare the liquid. So which side has more liquid? So you can see that in this case, your product side has more liquid, right? Therefore, the delta S will be positive. So, under this case, you know the first term, delta H, is positive. Your delta S is also positive. Therefore, the second term will be actually negative. In order to make your delta G negative, then you know 
it will only happen at high temperature. Okay, let's look at the very last one. Less specific reaction is exothermic. Therefore, you will know your delta H is negative. negative. How about your entropy, the delta S? Hard to judge, right? Because they are all solids. So you actually don't really know it's positive or negative. But the things you should know is actually it will be actually a smaller value. And this term actually again contribute to your T delta S term. So if you want to actually really ensure that the delta G is negative, then you know at low temperature, then you know the contribution from this will be very small, right? Then your delta G will be basically determined by your delta H. So you know your delta G will definitely actually be smaller than zero at the low temperature. Okay, so this is actually a type of questions. On the surface, you actually don't feel like like give you actually a lot of information. But if you know these things, if you do this table properly, you'll be able to see these things without any problem.